John, one of the encouragements, again, coming from the Black community is to, uh, to be willing to have conversations uh, with our sisters and brothers who are African-American, even, even if we make mistakes. And I'm yeah. wondering if you've had this experience of just sort of, sort of bumbling um, <laughs> and, and what you've learned from it or, or what your encouragement might be to the rest of us about, you know, putting on as much courage as we can to step yeah. into those conversations. Re really uh, great question. Um, so I live, I, I will be honest and tell you that I live my life in fear of that I'm, I'm always uh, I'm always very cautious about what I say because I don't want to say the wrong thing and say something offensive, something that seems indoctrinated in the way that I, you know, I have been brought up and and in my life experience that's so different than somebody else's. So, so my first uh, the first thing that I learned to do, which I, I will admit is difficult for me, especially as an attorney, um, is I learned to keep my mouth shut and just listen. And, and, you know, um, I, I heard a funny story about um, a, a, a woman who was in a meeting with a white man. She, she, he, was, he is a very influential white man in Louisville. And she had a meeting, she was in a big group with him and she was an African, he is an African American woman. And she sort of ineloquently said, uh, shut up, you've been talking for 400 years, now listen. And, there were some f bombs that were in that in that uh, directive, um, but it had it. You know, it, the, I laughed about it when I heard it, but it really, you know, made me realize that what you're saying is is true. That you know that we have to be careful about what we say, but but not to the point that we don't use our voices. And one of the things that I'm really encouraging people to do is to figure out a way that you can work yourself into involvement in race issues in a way that you're comfortable with, in a way that maybe taps into experience or, or you know, skills or education that you have. Um, and, and so it, it looks different for everybody. Um, and, but there's plenty of opportunity to, for, for engagement and, and the meaning that it will give to your life is incalculable. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, I, I, I am constantly aware that, that my perspective is that of a white man who has little experience um, with, with the black culture. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm trying to change that. Uh, by my experiences and by, and by my education, but I realized that, that, you know, I've got a lot to learn. And so, so I'm going to do as much listening and reading as I can, and I'm going to try to use my voice uh, in, in careful ways in which, you know, I, I can hopefully advocate for the position. One of the things that I've been disappointed with in our mayor, and again, not to make this political, I love Greg Fisher, and uh, have a tremendous amount of respect for him, um, but this is an uh, this is an opportunity for him, I think, to be quiet and to start listening to black leaders and to and to follow their lead here. You know, we we follow we're following a trajectory that has been um, in place for 400 years, and and it's going to take it's going to take really meaningfully um, looking at different perspectives. And giving deference to those perspectives for a while, you know. I mean, when, when you talk about issues like defunding the police, I mean, I think most people would cautiously say hey, we don't want to get rid of the police entirely, but things near, really need to be shaken up significantly uh, because we're starting with in an area that's so problematic. That that it really is going to take shaking it, the, the, the you know that system up, many other systems up, and and so that means taking risk. Right. And I think that you know I I just think we're at a point where we need to start giving black people deference in terms of their perspective, trusting them. It's kind of like the Me Too movement. You know, women have been saying for years that they have been mistreated and, and assaulted and, and abused and neglected by, by a, a male-dominated culture for forever. And it took the Me Too movement before we started, a, a significant number of people started to believe those stories. Right. And, and so, you know, it, it's time to give 
women an opportunity to, to, to be leaders. It's time for people of color 